for joining us. So I'd like to talk about confidence today. So what is confidence? Is it your degree? Is it your title? Is it the house you live in? Is it the car that you drive? Is it your Armani suit? Your Chanel handbag? Definitely my Chanel handbag. <laughs> <laughs> With the exception of Khalid, then, <laughs> on that side. No, it isn't. It's who you are in here. When everything is taken away and what you're left with, that's what true confidence is. Now, who's heard of the story of the three little pigs? Yeah? I love that story. I love children's stories. And the reason is because when you build your house, yourself out of twigs or sticks then the ravages of time will come along and what happens to your house it falls down so to build this inner resilience to stand true stand confident and know why you're here what your gifts are because your gifts are completely different to your gifts which means that you are an absolute one-off. You're unique. You're amazing. And when we're conditioned, and when we're brought up, an environment stands in our way, we lose the ability to see who we are. And confidence is such a beautiful thing because you can take it anywhere. So when the big bad wolf, which is the ravages of time, comes and huffs and puffs and blows your house and you've actually built in deep foundations and you're not going to fall down when things happen and invariably they do. You know, life wasn't meant to be easy, but it's a beautiful, amazing, incredible adventure. We're here to learn our lessons. We're here to have fun. We're here to collaborate, to communicate to give back, to educate ourselves, to evolve and grow. So it's really my mission and my passion and my desire to help so that teeny weeny seed in everybody that I meet to step into their own power. Because if you don't stand there confidently, <coughs> speak your truth from your heart, What's your life going to be looking like? Are you in the back seat of your car? Who's driving the car? Are you in the boot even? <laughs> Jump into the front seat. Take hold of that steering wheel. Do you know what? You have the power and the choice to steer it everywhere, anywhere that you want to. And that's so powerful. That's so amazing when you realize that you can have the life of your dreams. So where does it start? It starts up here. When you start to believe in who you are, when you discover what your God-given talents and skills are that are different from everybody else. Tiger Woods, what does he do? Nothing at the <laughs> Maybe. <coughs> What's he known for? Back in the ball. That's it. Yeah. So can you imagine Tiger Woods baking cakes on a Thursday afternoon? <laughs> can you imagine him under the bonnet of a car on a Sunday morning, tea cutting the bonnet? No. Because he learned very early on what his natural gifts and talents were, how he could shine in the world. And when he focused on that, didn't get distracted by everything else, he became very successful. So the only difference between us and somebody like him is being so certain of their path, so committed to what they're doing, and sticking 100% to that road. And you know what? 
life is a journey you walk down that road and you'll see a tree or some exciting little meander around here and that's okay but if you know where you're going to eventually you'll get there if you start here and you go off one degree ten miles down the line you'll be way off however just recalibrate well actually you know that's really where I wanted to be heading so I need to get back on track that's okay I'll just have a little detour here meet this person all oh, their fun yeah really lovely to meet you I'll go this way I'll learn this new skill this will help me get to where I want to be so I'd like to share with you five steps to reach your limitless power but first <clears throat> look at these beautiful little babies now do these babies wake up in the morning and say oh my gosh look at my belly that's it no milk today <laughs> do those babies look in the mirror and go oh, I'm having such a bad hair day get me to the hairdressers or do those babies look down at their hands and go oh, chipped a nail get me an appointment at the nail bar right now no of course not because these babies they know they're beautiful they're whole and perfect and complete in every way they also know how powerful they are and how loved they are because what happens when they're hungry what do they do? Cry. Thank you. Do they have any problems asking for what they want? No. Do they always get what they want? <laughs> yes. And they do because they cry until they get it. When they want to cuddle, what do they do? Yeah. Or if they don't get any response, they cry. We cry then. Point being, there's nothing in the way they don't live in a world of fear in a world of conditioning in a world of limiting beliefs and how many grown-ups do you know that gave up starting to walk not one how many grown-ups do you know that gave up trying to talk not one why is that what happened to us to make sure that we have fear standing in our way at all times what's holding you back if you could remove fear if you could remove financial limitations what would your life look like what would you want to do where would you want to be where would you live who would you have dinner with who would be at your dinner table if you could have anybody in the world probably different to the group that you currently have and so really what I'm doing is just planting that little seed in your head to to get you to open up your mind about the cap capabilities of your brain your mind your mind is so powerful so powerful 95 percent subconscious five percent conscious and you thought your conscious mind was running this show? No. So when you tap into your higher self and your subconscious mind, and you ask yourself, what's my monkey mind telling me? Bearing in mind that 120,000 thoughts are going through your head every day, so you're not alone. We all have this. When you can channel those thoughts from the negative to the positive, what will the results be like for you? when you start being mindful of the words you use they don't call them spellings for nothing what can you possibly achieve in your life if there's nothing holding you back now you're probably wondering what on earth is she doing up there what right does she have to come and tell me about confidence truth of the matter was I was the same as everybody else and two years ago I would have been terrified I would have blushed and I wouldn't have been able to say a single word standing up here this was me had high hopes for myself <laughs> way back when 
in very snowy Blackpool and uh, then something happened nothing specific nothing too amazing nothing very tragic apart from life and that was really um, my childhood very somber very serious awkward embarrassed didn't make friends very easily I used to blush so I made a decision because fear stood in my way but I didn't get that and I didn't get that for decades I didn't have a boyfriend until I was 15 I didn't make friends very easily I didn't have fun I genuinely didn't know how to have fun and I remember 20 years ago somebody asked me are you happy honestly I didn't know what that meant that's madness my life had been normal my parents loved me we lived together with my brothers so what had happened environment happened my limiting beliefs fear stood in my way on every level multi-level I actually even changed my name because I didn't like who I was and I reinvented myself so my relationship with who I was was not a good one at all and then a few years ago I just decided that you know what it's okay to be yourself it's okay for you to be brave enough to take your mask off to take your full body armor off and just show up as who you are because actually there are going to be people out there who don't get you who don't like you that's fine there are also going to be people out there who do like you who do get you people that you can serve people that you can help by sharing your story and that for me was so powerful and so I just got out of my own way and God blessed and now what I do which I love to do is I empower other people to stand in their own magnificent beauty people all over the world and it's such a gift to be able to do that and an honor so here's my monthly group there's two of the ladies in this room who are on this picture joining me and helping me um, Karen and Angie do you recognize yourselves in the back of the room <laughs> so I just decided that I was going to get out of my own way and I wanted to share so it's either going to be one-to-one -one or one-to-many and how does that work I had no idea that anybody would want to listen to what I had to share I had no idea if I would enjoy doing that I had no idea if I was capable of it so I just tried and then again and then again and then again and it's the same for you whatever it is that you do or you want to do what does your heart desire what's your calling in life what's your true purpose here because each and every one of you has an amazing gift in one way or the other maybe you haven't found that yet maybe you are the round peg in the square hole maybe you were brought up like many of us told okay you can be a doctor a solicitor or a lawyer that's it that's your choice I thought I was this amazing entrepreneur <laughs> there are loads of qualities and skills that I don't have that would make that work and so when I was prepared to have a look and see what it was that I was good at I learned to embrace it and as a result getting out of my own way not having a fear of no I've had the most incredible number of amazing opportunities to meet the most fabulous people because what's the worst that can happen when you go and talk to somebody and say hi I really would love to meet you I enjoyed your talk it was fantastic can we connect Can we have a photograph when are you speaking next how can I learn about more about you the very worst that anybody can say is no so if you can get out of your head that a no is okay and say next not in a nasty way but just in a it's okay because this person isn't my person next there are seven billion people on this planet there are amazing people all over the place beautiful people incredible people wise people interesting people funny people smart people 
Wouldn't you want to meet them all? How would they enhance your life? How could you enhance their lives? So I do run workshops. I do coaching. I speak. <laughs> I would love to connect with you if you're interested in having more of this or finding out more. Come and connect with me afterwards when we're all having a little chitty chatty network and some more coffee or teas. So my five steps are these. Find your purpose. What is it that you do that you absolutely love? What is it that you do that you're really fantastic at? Join the dots together. If there's something that you don't like doing, what options do you have? What choices are there for you? Do you want to carry on doing those for the rest of your life? Or do you want to find somebody else that can do those things so you can focus on what you're really good at? Do you want to pay somebody else to take them on board? For me, I hate ironing. It's not a good thing for me to do. Housework, that's definitely a bad thing for me to do. So what is it for you that you love and what is it for you that you don't love? Because your life isn't meant to be hard, it's not meant to be you doing something that you don't enjoy and that you don't love. Responsibility. Now this was a really tough one for me and it may be the same for you. When somebody said to me, you need to take 100% responsibility for your life, I thought, well I do. And they said, you don't. Because taking 100% responsibility for your life means everything you say, everything you think, everything that happens to you. You might think, well, that happened to me, and there's no way on this earth that I attracted that into my life. But on some level, on some level, you are vibrating at a really low vibration. I talk about the line. There's your line, it's zero. It's, n it's just neutral. Everything below the line is negative. Everything above the line is positive. So if you're operating at fear, regret, hate, anything like that, then you're going to only be able to attract those experiences and those people into your life. It's law of attraction, we're all energy. If you're operating up here, bless you, and you're in love, peace, abundance, joy, sharing, collaboration, those are expansive those are energetically positive and powerful, then you are going to be able to attract people into your life on these vibrations. And it's possible that you can walk down the street past the same person every day and not see them. And yet you change your vibration and you see each other. So have a think about what's going through your mind, what thoughts you're thinking, what words you're using, what you're putting out there on a subconscious level. What's your higher self saying? Take responsibility for everything that you've ever said, that you've ever done. Ideas, thoughts, your thoughts are really, really powerful. You have an idea, you have a thought, write it down, if it's a good one. If it's one that doesn't serve you and it's a negative thought and it brings you down, take a step back. Imagine it's a black cloud in the sky. Yeah, it's filled with rain. It might be a thundercloud. But is that going to be there forever? Or is that going to pass? Because once you don't give it power anymore, once the ego mind, you stand back from it and you say, actually, do you know what? That's okay. It's just my ego. Yes, your ego kept you safe when you had to run away from the lion or the bear, but times have moved on. The ego is self-sabotaging and it will sabotage every area of your life and every relationship you have. Unless you keep an eye on it. Calm it down. It will tell you, you can't do this, you can't do that. Who do you think you are? You're not clever. You're not from a nice family. You're from a bad part of town. It's that big voice that shouts in your ear and keeps you down, keeps you low. That's the little devil on this shoulder. 
You need to listen to the little angel on this shoulder. That's your intuition. That's your inner essence, your core, your higher self. That will whisper quietly. Go to this meeting, you might meet this person. Go and help that person, they're in need. Devotion, love. Love is the most powerful of all energies on the universal planet. Love is the opposite of fear. <laughs> love is the opposite of hate. When somebody is horrible to you, says something unkind to you, send them love. I know it doesn't feel great at first, send them love anyway. <clears throat> somebody insults you, send them love, bless them. Because if you're acting from a place of love and a point of love, they can't hurt you. It neutralizes them. If somebody's having an argument with you because they're all in their ego, in their lower self, if you just let them rant, they run out of steam. Otherwise, you're rowing, they're rowing, you're rowing, they're rowing, and it escalates. And why does it end? Arguments, fights, civil wars, world wars. No, we need to do the other way. We just need to send the love out there. But you've got to start with yourself. Anyone ever looked in the mirror at themselves and really looked deeply into their <laughs> own eyes and said, Natasha, I love you. I really love you. But use your own name, please. <laughs> <laughs> And have you ever wondered how that was going to feel for you? Because when you look in the mirror into your own eyes, we've done this, haven't we? <laughs> and you say to yourself that you love who you are. Honestly, you're connected with who you are. If you can't say it, you just become disconnected with yourself. Your body is your vehicle. Your mind is part of it, your essence or your soul or your spirit, however you want to look at it. We are all part and parcel of the same thing. We're very good in this country, in the Western world at large, looking after our bodies. We put on a nice suit, we have a shower, we do our face, we do our hair, paint our nails. We look great, yeah, I'm off. And most of us know how to eat healthy. Yeah, I'll have some vegetables, I'll have some fruit, I'll have a bit of drink. Yeah, that's good, I'm good to go. But, and your body is made up of muscles, and to be fit, you have to exercise. Not go to the gym once and then be fit forever and ever, but you have to go every day, or three times a week, or every week, or something like that. Your mind is the same, but it's a non-tangible muscle. You have to use it. You're in charge, not your ego. You are completely in charge. So. Your thoughts are so important. Loving yourself is so important. And your energy, your gratitude. How many people complain? <clears throat> How many people complain today? <clears throat> You're lying. <laughs> I bet you all complained in your mind or verbally to somebody or about something that wasn't quite the way you wanted it to be. Might have been too much traffic on the road. Might have got up late. Might have kicked the cat, stubbed your toe. Might not have been enough bread for your toast. And we can all find things that we're unhappy about. So how about not even going there? And have you tried getting through a day without any negative thoughts? Who practiced gratitude? Yay! Good job. How does that feel? Very um, empowering. Yes. How many things can you think of to be grateful for? <laughs> Loads. Oh, unlimited. unlimited. We live in a beautiful country. <coughs> it's safe, it's peaceful. We have clothes on our back. We have food in our cupboards. We have a roof over our head, we have jobs, we have family. What is it that we could possibly complain about? And yet the human mind defaults to negative. 
So it's our job to keep it positive. And it's harder work to keep it positive, but it's like the muscle. Keep going, keep practicing it, keep energizing it, keep it going. When somebody puts you down, when somebody says you can't do it, when someone tells you off, when somebody calls you useless or idiot, or those are really powerful words. And nine times out of ten, when those words come to you, they're just reflections coming from the person who's saying them. They're just projecting onto you. So imagine that those words are getting this far. Get your deflector shield around you. <coughs> So they don't even get close and they just drop on the floor. Send them love. Send them blessings. Love who you are. You're this way for a reason. And if you don't love and accept who you are, it's like having a civil war. You're going to be at odds with yourself your whole life. You were made this way for a reason. You're different from everybody else. You're unique. And one of my friends, and I was hoping he might have been here today so he could take the credit for this, but he's not, said to me, two pieces of advice about being successful. Number one, never give up. Number two, always follow rule number one. Because it's up to you. It's up to you. Be yourself because everyone else is taken. I think that's an Oscar Wilde quote. So what I do is I help people discover their life purpose, build confidence and self-belief, and learn the tools and techniques to equip them for life. Tools and techniques that you can use, you can teach your family, you can teach your children, you can apply forever. How to have clarity on your life. How to overcome stress and addictions. How to stop worrying. Because if you start worrying, it causes stress. If you get stressed, it makes you ill. That's how it works. Your mind is actually connected to your body, believe it or not. Would you put orange juice in your car? Who's that crazy lady? No, of course he wouldn't. Exactly. So why do you put negative thoughts in your head? Why do you put rubbish in your body? Why do you not honour who you are? And do you know why you've got two ears and one mouth? It's because you need to be spending twice as much time listening to talking. So when was the last time you really, really connected with somebody and you looked into their own eyes? And you listen to what they had to say. Without planning the shopping list or stuff you had to do when you got back to the office. We are beautiful beings. Not doings, beings. Those are the dates for my workshops. If anybody's interested, I would love to connect with you. And thank you so very, very much for your time today.